All right, so here's video two. We left off with the IAT sensor, and I was proving to you that what we're looking for when we're measuring the sensor data is going to be at the pin here and the pin here, okay? Back to the simple input of the door switch, all right, here. This is representing what I showed you on the door and how I actually measure it on the car, just like the last video. I was measuring right here, and what I was doing was verifying the switch worked. It went from 12 volts to zero when I operated the switch, telling me the switch is working and telling me the wire is good. Had I not had 12 volts here at all, I'd be thinking this wire's bad. Then I would measure it up here, measuring for the 12 volts. If I got 12 volts up here, that would tell me that the, the wire's probably bad because I'm getting the 12 volts out of the computer. So I was comparing this to the more complex input of this intake air temperature sensor, which works identical to engine coolant temperature sensor, transmission fluid temperature sensor, battery temperature sensor. Any temperature sensor works on this principle of Ohm's law where you have voltage up to the open. And this variable resistance right here and a fixed resistor right here. So the section between here and here is what changes based on this resistance. This resistance changes based on engine temperature. So I was showing you when I measured right here on the car, we got 3.7 volts because the car's cold right now, right? The, my Jeep's just sitting here. When I unplugged the sensor, we got five volts because I effectively opened up the wire right here and that's gonna um, and open up the ground. And that's why we showed five volts up to the open, which was going up to right here because I unplugged it from the ground signal. So now we're gonna move on to a more complex input right here, which is your three wire analog sensor, your throttle position sensor. So I wanna know which one of these three wires is five volt reference, which one's signal and which one's ground. And it's, you have to take these schematics. And if you look, I've taped all three together so I can trace them all together. So let's zoom back in here and I'll show you how we trace these. So here's sensor one, white, black. Let's find out where it goes. I follow it up to here and I come across here and it goes to that splice. Well, I know that white, black splice is right there. I don't know if it's power or ground yet. I can assume that it's ground, but I know it's not signal because it's shared splice with other sensors so i know it's not my signal so let's hold off on that let's look at number two and right here we have this orange dark blue wire i had to look at it sideways here and if we take it and it's focus it comes in up here we follow it up to right here orange dark blue it says six i go to pay the previous page six orange dark blue follow it across and it's orange dark blue 16. I transfer that to the next page 16 orange dark blue and I cross this all the way over to orange dark blue which is pin 23 and it says TP sensor in. Okay so that's my signal right there pin 23. If I wanted to check it at the computer that would be pin 23 TP sensor in. So let's come over here and you can see that that orange dark blue which I assumed was my signal is on the middle there. So let's take a look at this number three, just black light blue. I follow it up, black light blue, the same thing, follow it through and it goes again right here to splice. And this one actually is my ground because it's coming off that IET. See how it shares off the IET? That same splice, that ground signal. So I can assume that that's my ground. So over here, I can see that's my ground. But to be sure, let's go back to number one which is that white, black, follow it up, comes over, back to the splice. Now let's take a look at where the splice goes. So white, black's 11, white, black over here is 11. If I follow that wire over to white, black, it says five volt supply. So that wire, 17 coming out of the computer, that's my five volt supply to the TP, fall position sensor. So let's take a look over here. And that's important to know because when I'm measuring at the sensor on the car, I'm measuring because I think I have a problem. One, pin one right here is going to be, this pin right here is my five volt reference right here. So if you look, that I figured out is my five volt wrench from the computer. This is my signal. This is my ground. I need to know what's normal in order to know what's faulty when I measure on the car. So if I go to measure this pin on the car, I know that's my five volt reference. If I measure that on the car, 
and I don't have five volts, I move my way back up this wire to the computer, which was back at the computer. Um, on the car, look at the schematic, it's back right here. So then I would go to the computer. If I didn't have five volts to sensor, I would check it at pin 17 at the computer, make sure I have five volts there. If I have it there and not the sensor, I'm, get, I'm pretty much sure the wire's bad. I would have to find an open in the wire. So let's go back to my sensor. And if you look right here, so I know that that's going to be five volts. This will be 0.1 or less. This signal wire, pin two, is going to be a variable between 0.5 and 4.5, as we figured out on the last video on how a three wire analog sensor works. Because again, if five volts coming in, this refixed resistor strip goes down to ground, and the signal wire, based on throttle position, is going to sweep on that resistor. The closer to the five volts, it'll read five volts, and the closer to ground, it reads 0.1. So I'm going to take all of this data that I looked at the circuit on a schematic and I'm going to measure it in the car. This is why I told you, because if you look at this big schematic, it's really, really confusing. Let's focus in here. It's really confusing. There's a lot of wire, but I'm only concerned with the three. So if I put down here on the sensor, I would highlight it or and or I would write down that I know that's going to be five volts. My expected that's going to be 0.1 and the one in the middle you know, it's going to be hard to write here, but let's go over here. That's going to be 0.5 to 4.5. And then above this, this fraction indicator, the symbol that I got going on here. So again, the denominator, I write down my expected values. And the numerator is what I actually measure on the car. So let's go take a look. We're going to look at the white-black wire and the orange-dark blue wire and this black-light-blue wire. So I'm going to take the schematic. We're going to go look at the car and measure it. Okay, so I'm gonna attach my ground to the battery. I got my voltmeter right here, my DMM. And if you look, I have the throttle position sensor already back probed right here. And again, these are, this is the official way that you should back probe these. I don't want these touching. So you gotta make sure that all three of these T pins aren't touching each other. I have all three of them back pinned in. If I were to take the connector out, I've disconnected it. Just like that previous video, when I disconnected, I create an open. I'm only gonna measure five volts all the way across, so it needs to be intact. You wanna find the least intrusive way to measure this, so back probing is better, because if you look at this, my wire terminal, look how big that is compared to the other ones. If I stick that in there, I'm gonna damage the, the connector, the pin. So I wanna use the back probe to um, be safer to my, my measurement. So now let's take a look. The first one, five volt reference, is white, with a black lead. So let's find which one's white with black right here. And if you look, it's this far one right here. So let me bring my voltmeter over and I'm gonna measure that pin. I can touch that pin and now look at my meter. I have five volts. That's what I was expecting, so that's good. Now let's look at the schematic. My next one that I wanna look at is I'm gonna look at ground, make sure I got a good ground. And again, if I got five volts on that ground wire, that black with light blue wire, if I got five volts there, that would tell me I have an open downstream. Somewhere on that wire is open because of Ohm's law, I have voltage to the open through this resistor and down. So let's take a look. Here's your black with the light blue, which is right here on the outside. So that's pin three. I touch that wire and I look at what I got on the, my voltmeter, 8.7 millivolts. That's less than 0.1 and according to Ohm's law, Anything less than 0.1 after the last load is good. So that's a good ground back to my computer. If I had this higher, if I had this higher on this meter, you know, over like over 0.1, I'd be looking for unwanted resistance on this ground wire. And that's gonna affect, influence that signal. So let's look at my schematic. And now I can look at the signal wire. So that signal wire, which is orange and dark blue on pin two, that's the one that varies based on throttle position. So if you look back at the sensor, that orange, dark blue, orange wire with a dark blue tracer is in the center right there. See it poking out? Right there, okay? So I'm gonna touch that wire right there. And if you look at this throttle, I'm gonna manipulate it with my left hand. I can open up the throttle because this engine is a cable 
actuated throttle body injection. I'm gonna manipulate this throttle and you're gonna look at the voltmeter as I, as I manipulate it. So I have 0.6 and as I crack it open and move it, I'm checking the sweep of that signal wire. And notice it's moving nice and smooth. I'm gonna go all the way full throttle open, 3.7, and then slowly work my way back. I'm looking for any dips, imperfections, movements, glitches, drops to zeros, goes up to five, anything. I'm looking for a nice smooth sweep. And that was a pretty smooth sweep, but I caution you, a voltmeter is averaging. It's not actually giving me a live reading. So the best way to do this would be on a DSO, digital storage oscilloscope. And that would allow us to look at voltage over time. And you can see glitches instead of looking for dropouts in this reading, you'll see a picture of a dropout. So that's the way we test that three wire analog sensor. And the cool thing about these sensors I just showed you, if you look at the schematic, is all of this engine performance data, all of this schematic, they all basically work off the same principle. You got switches, variable resistors, three wire analog sensors like I just showed you, and solenoid outputs, just like the light bulb. So take it one piece at a time. You're gonna highlight your circuit, powers and grounds, write down expected values, measure them at the correct spot on the sensor using those T-pin back probe method, using a known good ground, which is the computer, uh, and then write down your values, compare them to your expected values, and look for what doesn't match. If you find something that doesn't match, that's where you have your problem. Okay, between the known good, the, the last good one,